Hey, so we're going to talk about density. Um, just some basic stuff that you should know about density. Density is a ratio of a substance's mass to its volume. Okay, So we can write it as density is equal to mass over volume or just simply D equals M over V. Some of the uh, easier ways to remember this relationship is uh, some people have said that the M over V looks kind of like a heart. And so if you just remember density, you love density, love density, uh, then, you know, that's that's a good way to remember it. M over V looks kind of like a heart. OK, um, because density is mass over volume, the units of density are going to be related to those two measurements. So uh, mass is typically measured in grams, sometimes kilograms if it's a large mass. And volume is typically measured in cubic centimeters or milliliters. Um, volume is, if you have a cube in, in, uh, in math, you learn that the volume of a cube or rectangular solid is, is you multiply the length times the width times the height, right? So um, volume is cubic length. But it's also sometimes more convenient to measure it in milliliters. Here's a cool fact. One cubic centimeter is exactly the same volume as one milliliter. Just another reason we like the SI system easy conversions. Okay, So because we measure mass in grams usually and volume in cubic centimeters or milliliters, then the units of density are going to be therefore either grams over cubic centimeters or grams over milliliters if we're talking about solids. And if we're talking about gases, it's grams over liters. Now I want you to think about that for a second. Why would the density of gases be reported with a different kind of unit? Well, Gases take up a lot of space, but there's not a whole lot of matter there. There's not a whole lot of mass there. So if we were to use grams per cubic centimeter or grams per milliliter for a gas, the value, the number would be very, very, very small. So it's more convenient sometimes to just use the mass of a larger volume of gas so that it's a more manageable number. That's why it's done that way. Okay. Now the concept of density, density is a constant for a pure substance. okay, uh, We have a term for this, we say that it's an intensive property. An intensive property is a property of matter that doesn't depend on how much stuff you have. okay. So like gold is gold colored and it doesn't matter if you have a tiny little piece of gold or a piece of gold the size of you, it's still the same color. That's an example of an intensive property. okay. So it doesn't matter how much you have and density is one of those. The density of gold is 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter or per milliliter. That means if you had a little cube of gold and it measured one centimeter on a side, the mass of that cube would be 19.3 grams. Gold is pretty dense, okay? But that means it doesn't matter how much gold you have, the density, the ratio of mass to volume is always gonna be 19.3. Well, that should make sense if you think about it. The more mass of gold you have, the bigger the space it'll take up, the more volume. and if we keep increasing mass and volume at the same uh, proportion, then the ratio is going to be the same. Okay. Another thing about density you should know is that the density of a substance changes as the temperature of that substance changes. So if you increase the temperature of something, it makes the molecules move faster. They start to wiggle if it's a solid, and then eventually they move, and they break out of their solid, and they move around, and they bump into each other, and they start to take up more space. Well, space is volume. So if you have the same number of particles, the same number of molecules, you haven't changed the mass, but you give them more space to occupy, well, now you've increased the volume. So if you keep the same m, but you increase the v, what happens to density? That's right, it goes down. Density decreases. Okay. So as you increase the temperature, most substances, as you heat them up, they become less dense, and vice versa. You cool something down, it becomes more dense because the particles get closer together and they take up less space, except for water. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. So if you've ever heard the old uh, expression, which weighs more, a pound of lead or a pound of feathers, and the, the trick is that, well, it's a pound of each, so they weigh the same. But if you think about it, which is heavier, lead or feathers? You can't really answer that question. You can't say lead is heavier than feathers because if you have a small piece of lead and a truckload of feathers, the feathers are going to weigh more right? But if you have the same size sample, for example, 
lead is more dense. There's more matter in that small size of lead than there is in a small amount of feathers. And so we, it's better to say that lead is more dense than feathers, okay? Not it's heavier. Because when you just say it's heavier, you're not talking about how much you have. When you say it's more dense, there's a ratio. That brings in the amount of space it takes up, the volume. So why do things float? Floating has everything to do with density. So the density of water at 4 degrees, remember things change, density changes with temperature. So at 4 degrees Celsius, just above freezing, the density of water is exactly 1.0 gram per cubic centimeter. That means for every milliliter or cubic centimeter of water you have, you have 1 gram. That is an extremely handy remember, thing to remember. Okay, Because even though it says at 4 centigrade, uh, the density of water doesn't vary a whole lot if it's in the liquid state. So when we talk about the density of water, we'll always say that that's going to be one gram per milliliter. Try to remember that because it's going to be very useful uh, throughout the, the course of this class. The density of water is one gram per milliliter, okay, or one gram per cubic centimeter. So in order for something to float in the water, that object that's floating has to have a density that's smaller than one, has to be less than water's density, okay? If if that object has less density than one, then it'll float. So ice, for example, has a density of 0.931. It's a little less than one. That means ice is going to float in water. Okay? We see this. We see this with icebergs. Well, what about hot air balloons? Do hot air balloons float? Yeah, they float in the air. So what are hot air balloons filled with? What are hot air balloons filled with? Go ahead. I'll, I'll wait. You figure it out. Right, hot air. Okay, so why do they float? Well, based on what we just said, what can you say about hot air compared to cold air? Right, hot air is less dense. And since it's less dense, the hot air balloon will float in cold air. Now, there's some physics behind that as to why that is. Okay, it's actually the cold air, because it's more dense, is getting pulled down towards the earth and it's actually pushing the hot air balloon up because the hot air balloon can't be in the same space as the cold air. If the cold air wants to be there, it's going to be there and it's going to push it up. Okay, So things that are more dense get pulled down by gravity. Things that are less dense end up having to go up because they have to go to a place where there's no more dense stuff. Okay, Hot air balloons have to go up so that the hot air can get away from the cold air because the cold air wants to be down by the surface of the earth. Okay, so. Didn't we just say, though, that uh, if you increase the temperature of something, um, the volume gets bigger and therefore the density goes down? How the heck does ice float in water? Isn't ice lower temperature than water? Shouldn't it be more dense than water? It should be, but it isn't. Most substances are. Most substances, if you take a solid piece of, say, lead, and you put it in liquid lead, it's going to sink right to the bottom because it's colder and therefore more dense. Water's weird. Water has some weird stuff going on. Water, liquid, and the molecules are pretty close together to each other, and they move around, and they knock into each other. But when you, when you slow them down, and we'll see why this is later, but when you slow water molecules down, they actually go into a very specific pattern. It looks like a bunch of little hexagons. It's a crystal structure. But look at these two diagrams here. The liquid water molecules are closer together and therefore take up less space than those same molecules in the form of ice. And because the ice takes up more space, greater volume, lower density. Water is one of the only substances we know of that actually has this property. And it's a good thing that it did, that it does, because if it didn't, life as we know it on this planet would never have evolved in the way it did. I'll tell you more about that later on. Okay, so that's what density is all about. We'll learn a little bit about how to use that information to get some uh, calculations done. But for now, just make sure that you understand the basic ideas of density. And uh, we'll move on from there. Good luck. See you next time.